everyone, welcome to Brickball. My name is Jack. Today we are reviewing the brand new LEGO Creator modular set. This is the Assembly Square. Now normally we unbox and then build and then review. This episode is just going to be the review. There are a ton of things to cover in this episode. This is the biggest of the modular creator sets ever made. One of the largest Lego sets out there. And this is of course the 10 year anniversary modular creator set. Because of that the designers have uh, sort of hidden a few homage sections to other different modular creator builds from the past. I won't be focusing on those things so much but just checking out how good this set that stands on its own, which I'll tell you right now, it's pretty good. But guess what? We're taking a look at the box just very quickly. It is recommended for ages 16 and up. It is set number 10255 and it has 4,002 pieces. It sells for $280 in the States and it is rated for 180 pounds in the UK. It's a massive box. Here is a banana, Lego banana guy for scale. And this is what the back of the box looks like. Tons of stuff going on. Why am I showing it to you? All right, let's get into the actual review. Now, this isn't the tallest of the modular creator sets, but it is the widest. It is on two base plates. One is a 32 by 32 and a 16 by 32, and it comes with nine minifigures if you're including the baby fig. Now, the assembly square and subsequent buildings are made of not one, not two, not three, but seven different chunks. Here they all are. Each section is very sturdy, easy to handle. I mean, it's there's so many pieces, though. You definitely, of course, want to pick up this modular build by itself from the base, never by any of the mid sections because they do detach quite easily. But here's the outside. Here's really the main bit of detailing. Um, and I think the main draw for most people that are probably going to be buying the set. Now this is all one build, but it does look like three separate buildings. And uh, I think there's a slightly different building technique used for all three areas. Now on the left, we've got a great color combination for this building and what looks like a blue beveled wall with these high white windows. And as we move down, you can see what I think is probably the most obvious uh, tip of the hat to any of the alternate creator sets, which is the cafe corner. And it is that sign with the coffee mug in the front, very similar to the original cafe corner modular build. Now we're looking at the outside seating area. We have some of our more popular patrons sitting there. Also, I'd like to point out that we have several of those one by one round wedge tile pieces. Those are relatively new, so it's nice that we get some in the stools. And I suppose now is a nice time to take a look at the alleyway in the corner. And it's relatively narrow. It does have space to fit a minifigure in there if you like. And there's actually a side door in the back. And this is what it looks like from behind. The first complete separate alleyway that we've had in any of the modular builds. And it looks decent. Now here is what I would consider sort of the main focal point of the square of part of the assembly square, the, the main area here, right in the middle of the plaza is a nice fountain. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like the water spout is supposed to be suspending this metal ball in the center. I don't know if this is based on a specific design for a fountain, just kind of gives that illusion. It's a nice build, but I think what especially makes this area so great is the uh, detailing within the tile pieces that make up the floor around it. Those corner pieces that are in both white and dark gray, that kind of have the lopped off corner. I don't know how else to call it. That mold is new. Both colors uh, are new. This is the first set that we've gotten that. And I think uh, very appropriately used for its first iteration in the Lego set. I have a feeling we're gonna be seeing that part a lot more in the near future. Now let's shift to the other half of the exterior. It's actually kind of more than half. And we've got uh, the two other buildings in the corner there. And now we're gonna take a look at some of the nice features. Uh, namely, we've got a couple of roses right in front of the flower shop. Great, very simple builds for roses. And just next to the flower shop, the bakery has uh, some garage door transparent pieces that have been flipped on their sides that make up the windows here. Very clever. And of course, we have an appropriate little pretzel. And on the inside, yes, that is a wedding cake, but we'll get back to that in just a second. Now, one of the nicer bits on this edge is this tower that goes up the side here. It goes all the way to the top. We've got a nice point. And some of those new curved tile pieces are actually on the inside. I'll show those in a little bit. But this rooftop here in the center is probably the second best homage to any of the other creator sets. This is uh, supposed to be similar to the Parisian restaurant roof, which was an excellent build. And there's actually quite a lot of clever building on the inside there. And yes, those are Thor's hammers underneath the tractor scoopers that make up the curve of the roof. Oh wait, I totally missed this chicken piece that is next to the tower. Awesome little touch there. And this is probably one of the best original prints I've ever seen on a window. Now there's plenty of other details to notice on the front, but maybe you should discover those on your own. Let's check out the back. And there's a few things here I just want to point out very quickly. The coffee shop is full of window panes and you can open up that glass door in the back with a vine there. 
Just above the photography studio is an outdoor barbecue area and it looks very fancy. It's not just a regular barbecue pit, but quite a lot of nice things are going on here. I will say that it might've looked nice to have some sort of foldable roof that uh, would expose this area and having some more roofing on this side, but it probably wouldn't have looked nearly as nice as how it looks on the front. Also, the back of the flower shop has a door that opens. This trash can behind the bakery has some cherries hidden inside. And we've got some great builds for the stairwells on the back side here. This is how a minifig would get between the rooms. Now, if you think I'm jumping through these details a little fast, it's because I am. We've got a lot of Lego to get through. And uh, speaking of Lego, let's check out the interior rooms now. First, starting with the kids' bedroom, which is a Lego playroom. Now, what you can see here looks like a forest display with trains running through. Also, those are some of the creator cars, if I'm not mistaken, the camper van and possibly the Mini Cooper. But we also have this special printed piece, the cat cafe corner, the very first Lego modular build. That's the box for it. The other side of the room shows a red folding couch with a carpet. And above that couch, uh, I believe with closer inspection, you can see even more creator sets that are hanging above. Pretty sure that's the palace cinema on the left corner. Coming full circle in the room, we've got a small build for a kitchen, and behind there is a bathroom. The door opens up, but what's actually really nice about this build is actually what you can see in the toilet. Don't take this the wrong way. They just added a nice transparent clear piece in the bowl to make it look like the bowl is actually full of water. This is a major improvement, and yeah, it's kind of weird to get excited about a toilet, but anyways, we are now one floor down looking at the dentist's office. This is just the lobby. It's got a chair with a clock. There are two doors that go in and out, actually. Well, three technically to go into the photography spot and hold up we're freeze framing for a second those are the new curved tile pieces right on the edge they're uh, in between the tower slices and it makes the transition a little nicer on the outside but something tells me those light gray pieces are going to be used for a lot cooler things in the future so here we are in front of the actual dentist chair great build that makes up both the chair and the uh, the tools around with the light hanging over and there's even maybe some novocaine in that syringe and it's nice to know that the minifigs fit in very easily. Here's another great example of the water still in the sink. Great detail used there, very clever. And inside the glass cabinet, we've got uh, some jars for maybe medicine or something, who knows. Also that reception desk has a couple of printed pieces, one saying I heart HLC, and let's move on to the photography studio. There are precisely two things about this room that I love. Uh, the first is the white sheet that is on the roll that hangs down, great clever build that makes that up. And the second thing that I like about the room is the old style camera that sits in the middle. Those ball pieces at the bottom fit in between the clips just perfectly with just the right amount of tension. And of course, this is a piece that you could have outside of the build at any time if you like. Here's a shot from the inside of the room here. Not much to say about the windows. And then the back, well, if you take the figures out, has uh, I think a drink. And then if you look closely, that is um, the banker's manager's father. That's a, that's a print from the Brick Bank modular build, another little homage piece. And all right, let's move on down to the bottom floor into the bakery where we have the coolest baking function ever made from Lego. This is the back oven. And if you hit a tiny little push pin in the back, Boom, we get fresh baked cookies. Now here is the baker behind the register and with some cookies on display. And behind him here are some of the pastries that he's just recently baked. And you also notice that they left space there to put up more pastries if you've got the time and parts to build them. Now here is that wedding cake that I mentioned earlier. It's a very large build. The middle section actually kind of spins around, which is a curious feature. But of course, anyone can appreciate the bride and groom that sit at the top. Now the front of the bakery has a new piece that is uh, that sort of diagonal door piece. I'm not gonna pull out the entire thing to show you, but uh, you can just appreciate that. Yes, they are trying new pieces in new ways in the set. Now we're looking at a parrot and this is an injection mold. So every colored parrot should be slightly different from the other ones so they're all gonna be a little bit unique very cool look to the bird though and our flower shop also has a little plant that's right on the register now here is the flower shop from just a couple other angles it's not barren I mean we've got uh, some nice flowers and some displays in the corners and things like that and I do like uh, the tile display at the bottom you can see there's some pegs to hold some minifigs now it is time to move on over to the next section the uh, blue building that we saw before and the bottom floor moving our way up now is the coffee shop or the cafe really 
The inside here is relatively cozy. We've got some uh, stools and chairs with some tiny little tables, lamps and flowers. And this is a close up look at the espresso machine because I'm about to kind of block it off by adding our barista. There you can see a printed tile that is a little slice of pie. And then turning it around the room, you can see um, some larger seats, more pie, of course. And what I like about the coffee shop is that the walls are basically all glass, really nice and open. Seems like a nice place that you'd actually kind of want to hang out. Now you might have noticed behind the barista is a flight of stairs and that leads up to our second floor which is our music shop. The register is kind of placed a little bit oddly kind of right in the middle of the room but up on the wall we've got a couple of builds for guitars. One is acoustic the other electric and then a really simple but fun looking build for a drum set and then we've got a saxophone as well. I like that everything is kind of open and bright. Lots of windows. Uh, relatively barren but not quite as barren as our top floor. This is the dance studio and it makes sense there isn't really a whole lot of stuff kind of cluttering up the room. In fact, the only thing we really got is this build for a piano, which I have to say is an excellent build for a piano. We've got a little stool, but really the pieces that make this thing up are extremely simple and it really just looks good. It's probably one of the nicest pieces uh, within any of the rooms, I gotta say. So the last thing to point out is the mirror in the dance studio. Of course, uh, it would need one. I feel like there's enough space where they might have been able to add two right next to each other, but I suppose they decided not to. And of course we do have a balcony on the top. This is what it looks like from the outside. Also, there's another flight of stairs and that leads up to the roof in case you want to get on top there or your minifigs do. Now we finally finished a run through of the assembly square. There is a lot of stuff to go through and trust me, there's plenty of things to notice if you get the set on your own, but let's check out the minifigs. I really do like the minifigs. They're all relatively simple. So I'll show them off individually very quickly. Number one, the chef. He's got a little bit of a belly on the top there, and of course a chef's hat. Number two is the musician, or at least the guy that was working in the musician shop. He's got a plaid shirt, gray pants, and a nice brown widow's peak hairpiece. I think that is the first time we've had this hairpiece in that particular color. And then there is the dentist. Nice little graphic for the tooth on the shirt. Of course he comes with white gloves. And our next minifigure is the ballerina, or the dancer. She's got a tutu white legs and printing that shows a butterfly tank top. Here is our barista. She's, uh, I think, the only minifig with printing on the legs that shows the apron going down onto the pants. She's rocking a black pixie cut. And here is another version for what is, I believe, our babysitter. At least this minifigure was portrayed as a babysitter in the uh, in the set. Simple printing to show a zip-up hooded sweatshirt. And this guy, you might have guessed, is the photographer. He comes with a beret, a ridiculous mustache, and a hooded sweatshirt as well. Now the last true minifigure minifigure for this set is this old lady. She's got a gray hairpiece. I think this is the first time that hairpiece has come in the particular color and a very vibrant purple blouse. Now there are these two little rascals. This is the new baby fig that has appeared in just a handful of sets now and we've got a little chihuahua as well. And the baby comes with this great build for a little baby carriage. Or it could be for the chihuahua if you're one of those people. Now, if you're gonna go ahead and get the largest modular creator set that is available on the market, you might as well put it in with your modular city. And because this is kind of a temporary build, I'm just gonna do a very quick switcheroonie. Let's take out the town hall for a moment and the pet shop. And here we are installing the assembly square. I don't know if this is gonna be the final resting place. I just wanted to kind of knock it in and see what it looked like. That's the beauty of having modulars. You can always just switch it around. So in this spot, I think it looks like we've got pretty much a lot of tall, narrow buildings next to one big fire station. And I kind of like the assembly square being across from the park and in definitely sort of a very central part of the city. I think this is something that uh, should be shown off. At the end of the day, adding stuff to the Lego city is really all about creating a nice atmosphere. And the assembly square certainly has more depth than any of the modular creator sets uh, up to date. That is for sure. Now, unfortunately, we had to take out this thing from the LEGO City right after I showed you those shots because we borrowed the set. That's why we didn't actually do an unboxing and build part of the episode because um, this is not our set. We're picking it up in just a couple of days. And let me know if you want to see a live stream build of the set because uh, I'm probably going to be building it the entire weekend. That is uh, pretty much a guarantee. Anyways, I love the set. I can't wait to build it myself. And uh, if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. And um, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time at Brick Ball. Yeah.